Today we celebrate the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Please stand and greet those around you. Shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. We begin our celebration with song number 86, Heart the Herald Angels, song number 86.
Let us pray. O oh God, who are pleased to give us a shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
face of your anointed. Blessed are they, blessed are they who dwell in your house, O
uh, the momentary loss of a child. You know, maybe you were in a big store and you had a three-year-old that went in one direction and you had two other ones over here and all of a sudden you lost track of the three-year-old. And you know what your heart does at a point like that? Something like that sort of happened in our family. I'm the oldest of ten kids and my sister May is number eight in line. And when she was about two and a half, she had been noticing that my dad would walk to work and the pharmacy that our family has is about six blocks from the house that we had in Lakokina. And so she just saw him take off to the east and she didn't realize that dad took a left about, you know, before he got to the highway, he just walked to work. So Meg, I guess, decided she was missing her dad, so she thought she'd walk in the direction he walked, and said she didn't take the left, she kept going, and she ended up out at the highway. And uh, I guess this guy in a truck drove by, and my mom didn't even, hadn't even missed her at this point, and this guy, and he says, what, and he got out of the truck, he stopped the truck, and he says, what's your name? And she said, Meg, and he didn't get a last name. And so then this truck ends up going to our house, and he gets out of the truck and says, well, she just looked like an Oster house, so I just brought her here. <laughs> so I guess that's one of the pluses of growing up in a small town. But when you think, you know, I thought, gosh, she's a girl. Do we look that much alike? You know? And uh, you can tell right away, I guess. But it sort of reminds me not only of the gospel when Jesus was lost, but there's a couple of lines in that second reading that Gail read where it says, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called children of God, yet that is what we are. And in some translations, there's an exclamation point after the word are. Yet that is what we are, exclamation point. So, so the writer of that letter is saying, we are in that family, the family of God. And then it says a little bit later in that passage, when this is revealed, we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. It's one of the few passages that says that we will eventually be like God. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but again, it sounds like we're in that family. There should be something recognizable about God and us, something we have in common, that people can tell we belong to him and that we're like him. Kind of like the, the truck driver said, well, she looked like an Oster house. I just brought her here. Um, you know, getting back to that child that's lost. And, you know, for, for my sister Meg, I think she was only gone, I don't know, 20 minutes maybe. But for Jesus, it was two or three days. And Mary and Joseph must have really been in a panic. But when we think of this story, I just wanted to have you host a few ideas about what this could mean for us spiritually if in your life you feel like you lost Jesus. Mary and Joseph felt like they lost Jesus. So spiritually speaking, if you feel like you lost Jesus, I think Mary and Joseph did three things that can be hints for us. First thing they did is it says they checked the caravan and they consulted with relatives and acquaintances. They thought maybe he was with them. And so, if you feel like you're at a point in your life where you've lost Jesus, you know, chances are you wouldn't be here at a 4 o'clock mass on a Saturday night if you totally lost him. But if you feel like you've lost him, do you have somebody you can talk with about your faith? Last, in last week's gospel, we talked about Mary and Elizabeth and how Mary had this kinswoman with whom she could share this angelic experience. Someone she could trust with that. Do you have somebody in your network of family or friends that you could share something like this with if you felt like, you know, my, my faith doesn't seem strong right now, or somehow I, my heart's sick, or I've lost Jesus somehow. Can you check with them first? The second thing that the Holy Family did is they went back to the temple. And if we think of that spiritually, if you feel like you've lost Jesus, maybe it's good to go back to church. And sometimes people think, well, you know, when I go to church, I'm, I feel like lately I've just been going through the motions. Or when I say my prayers, I'm just saying words. But there's value in at least coming back here, even if you feel like your heart's not totally in it. It's okay. In recovery groups, we say, keep going to meetings because you really can't think your way into a new way of acting, but you can act your way into a new way of thinking. 
And I think what that phrase means is there's a value in going through the motions, even if you're not totally there yet. I think sports coaches know all about this muscle memory. You go through the same drills. It's drill after drill after drill. If a team's on a losing streak, the coach says, go back to the fundamentals. Let's get back to the basics. And for us as Catholics, coming to Mass, saying our prayers, that's ba those are the basics. And so if you feel like you've lost Jesus, it's good to go back to the temple. That's what Mary and Joseph did. And they found him there, and it said that, they, that he was talking with the elders. But he was also listening to the elders. It says he was listening, he was asking questions. They were amazed at his answers and his understanding. So he was kind of in dialogue with the tradition. We can think of the elders representing that spiritually. And so if you feel like you've lost Jesus, it's good to get back to the roots and encounter that dialogue with it. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to totally agree, but just are you in some kind of contact and communication and dialogue here? That's what Jesus was doing with the elders. The third thing that the Holy Family did is after they found him, they took him back home. And if you feel like we've lost Jesus, we can ask ourselves, have I invited him back lately? Can I make some time, some room in my schedule? Can I give him an actual place in my home? Again, a physical reminder. And Deacon Victor Slover and, and the Knights of Columbus have, you know, a concrete way to do that. So I just wanted to invite Vic to tell us a little bit about what's available but as far as inviting him to your home. The Knights of Columbus has always been at the forefront of when it comes to supporting vocations and building faith-filled families. So at last October, they launched an initiative to promote family togetherness. We always think about uh, this quality, quality time that we need with our own family and having a, a, a time in each day for a meal. So they created this, a family fully alive. So on this feast day of the Holy Family, we are making packets available. So in the back of the church, there's a packet. Um, and within that packet is a high quality photo. And what I've done is put it in a frame. And it is, a, it is actually in a colored print. So it's, it's very beautiful. And um, there's also in this packet, there's a, a, a guidebook that contains monthly prayers, scripture readings, and family projects. And one of the family projects is just as simple as during the Christmas season is make sure you watch some uh, uh, Christmas type movies, not, uh, uh, not you know, something that's got a, a theme of, of Christianity to it. Um, um, if you've received, a, happen to receive one of these packets, during generations of faith, we're asking you not that you don't need to pick up another one because that photo was included with, with the generation of the faith packets. But I would like you to pick up a white sheet that's in the back there with those with that box, and it has a, um, a white sheet that's titled Five Easy Steps to Becoming a Family Fully Alive. And um, the this uh, these sheet outlines five easy steps to have a family that's that's more prayerful, more faithful. Uh, one of the, uh, I'll quickly go through the five different steps. One is create a prayer space. We all know that uh, in Scripture we read that when Jesus was teaching his disciples and praying with his disciples, they did it at a meal. So we're uh, asking you to create a uh, particularly a prayer space, maybe in your kitchen. That's where you would gather with family. And then the second one is. is Every week, take your children to Mass. And this uh, explanation explains, you know, particularly taking little types to Mass. Uh, the third one is, is um, deals with religious education. Um, when we, I'm a seventh grade teacher, and when we, uh, uh, we take five minutes after every class to, to talk about what are five things maybe that you learned in class tonight. And we're encouraging the students to take these uh, slips of papers home and talk to your parents about what you learned in religious ed that night. The next thing is, is asking a question that stirs the hearts and minds in this sacred space. So, you know, when your kids are gathering with you at the supper table at night, instead of asking them the, what they learned in class or what they learned in school that day, ask a question like, 
one of the examples is, is what do you think Jesus was like as a boy? Or what is your best, best family memory? Or what are things that we could pray for today? There's about ten questions on this sheet of paper. The last one is, is begin each meal with a meal prayer. And I tell my children, we, uh, we made copies of these, this, these photos that we got and put them in a frame like this. And we gave them to our children for Christmas. Uh, they have, we have 11 grandchildren, so they each have children themselves. And we use it, we te I told them to, let this be a reminder to make sure that you start every meal with a meal prayer. And our kids, we have kids going to daycare, Christian daycare, we have some going to Catholic schools, we have some going to other kinds of programs, or, and some are in Catholic schools. But they all have different Catholic prayers, so, so when they come home for uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, we ask those kids to, our grandchildren, to lead the meal prayer. And they readily do that. So uh, start. This is just a reminder to get your children to start uh, to start the meal of uh, meal prayer. Nancy and I are teaching and guiding each other in our faith and our children in their faith. Even after they've left the nest, our prayers is, and the way we live our lives does make a difference to them. So we're promoting this, and we're grateful to the Knights of Columbus for for buying these photos for us and putting this all together for us, and we encourage you to do the same. Thank you. I wanted to close uh, the homily with this prayer to the Holy Family, and this was a prayer that we prayed at the family conference that we had in Waterloo back on November 7th. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, in contemplating your example, we wish to mirror the splendor of true love as we turn to you with trust and hope. Holy Family of Nazareth, grant that our families here in the Archdiocese of Dubuque may be places of communion and prayer, authentic schools of the gospel, and small domestic churches. Holy Family of Nazareth, may our families experience caring rather than violence. Togetherness in place of division. May our homes be filled with comfort and healing, dispelling hurt and rejection. Holy Family of Nazareth, make us ever mindful of the blessed call to holiness of each family and its beauty in God's plan. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, bring us together for support, open discussion, and the desire to make our families more like yours. In all we do and say, help us to live. Our mission is love. Let's stand up and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Maker, and Earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Lord and the Father.
especially those without basic needs of food and housing, employment or wages, adequate education or health care. We pray to the Lord. We pray that people in our country might have greater respect for the sacredness of life and the dignity of every person, for God's plan for marriage and family and for true religious liberty. We pray to the Lord. We pray for families in danger around the move, victims of war and violence, refugees and undocumented immigrants, those awaiting deportation and victims of persecution. We pray to the Lord. We pray for broken families and those who struggle with conflict and for those committed, committed to helping them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our own families, those who have loved us and those who have hurt us. That elderly parents be consoled and strengthened by caring, loving sons, daughters, and grandchildren. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick, dying, and grieving, for those who have died during this past Christmas season. And this evening we remember Walter and Lucella Shackleton. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, you send your son to live among us in a simple family. Show us how to love one another so that, like him, we may help each other grow in strength and wisdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The children will come up with their offering. As we present our gifts, let's join together in song number 87, O Come Little Children, number 87. Through your goodness we have this brand new offer which earth has given and human hands have made. 
it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Heaven, 
And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <coughs> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and ministers, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. With your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, and we remember in a special way our loved ones whom we miss during this holiday time. Lord, give them kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Thank you. 
as we receive the body and the blood of Christ, let's join together with song number 108, First Noel, number 108. Thank you. 
gospel that said Mary reflected on these things in her heart. And that's one of the reasons we take some moments of quiet after communion. Remember who we have within us in the Eucharist. The things that the Holy Family did in today's gospel is they talked with relatives and friends. They went back to church and they also took Jesus home. And so that's kind of an invitation for us during this holiday season. We offered as a gift these books, Rediscover Jesus by Matthew Kelly. And one of the chapters has kind of a, some basics of prayer, kind of a format to follow. And sometimes uh, some people are just looking for some structure. And this book certainly has some interesting questions, some important questions and structures for how to continue to grow in our faith. And every household is welcome to have one of these. I think we still have some left if you did not receive one yet. I'll just continue with the other announcements here. <coughs> December 31st and January, well, January 1st is the Holy Day of Obligation, so check out the bulletin for our Mass times on December 31st and also on January 1st. Also, we have red envelopes in the pews. We have special projects and ways to contribute. So, I can take one of those red envelopes home and help us out with one of those uh, special projects. And since we need to put a new roof on a section of the school for the gathering space this summer, that's one of the projects coming up. Our pastoral office will be closed at noon on Thursday, December 31st. And if you wanted to make a contribution and have a count on this year's tax statement, so we need to get those contributions in before that phone call comes. <laughs> <laughs> we need those contributions in by Thursday. And then our office will be closed all day New Year's Day. I've got some bulletins that have to do with today's readings, and, and uh, these are for the kids, some puzzles and some games. So would any of the children like to come up for one? Lots of people here to help hand them out. We know you're out of school, Haley, and you need some homework. Parker, we know you need lots of homework. <laughs> Thank you. 